Today I'm going to read Esther 5 to 10, Psalm 145, and Proverbs 27. Let's get started. That night the king couldn't sleep, so he ordered the official records of his rule to be brought in. He ordered someone to read them to him. What Mordecai had done was written there. He had uncovered the plans of Baker Thana and Teresh. They were two of the king's officers who guarded the door of the royal palace. They decided to king kill King Xerxes. What great honor has Mordecai received for doing that? The king asked. Nothing has been done for him, he and his attendants asked. The king asked, Who is in the courtyard? Haman had just entered the outer courtyard of the palace. He had come to speak to the king about putting Mordecai to death. He wanted to talk about putting Mordecai's body on the pole he had prepared for him. The king's attendants said to him, Haman is standing in the courtyard. Bring him in, the king ordered. Haman entered. The then the king asked him, What should be done for the man I want to honor? Haman said to himself, Is there anyone the king would rather honor than me? So he answered the king. He said, Here's what you should do for the man you want to honor. Have your servant bring a get a royal robe you have worn. Have them bring a horse you have ridden on. Have a royal mark placed on his head. Then give the robe and horse to one of your most noble princes. Let the red be put on the man you want to honor. Let him be led on the horse through the city street. Let people announce in front of him. This is what is done for the man the king wants to honor. Go right away, the king commanded him. Get the red. Bring the horse. Do exactly what you have suggested. Do it for Mordecai the Jew. He's sitting out there at the palace gate. Make sure you do everything you have suggested. So Haman got the robe and the horse. He put the robe on Mordecai. And he led him on horseback through the city street. He walked along in front of him and announced, This is what is done for the man the king wants to honor. After that, Mordecai returned to the palace gate. But Haman rushed home. He covered his head because he was very sad. He told his wife, Zeresh, everything that had happened to him. He also told all of his friends. His advisors and his wife, Zeresh, spoke to him. They said, Your fall from power started with Mordecai. He is you. So now you can't stand up against him. You're going to be destroyed. They were still talking with him when the king's officials arrived. They hurried him in the way to the feast Esther had prepared. So the king and Haman went to the went to King Esther's feast. They were drinking wine on the second day. The king asked, What do you want, Queen Esther? I'll give it to you. What do you want me to do for you? I'll even give you up half of my kingdom. Your Majesty, I hope you will be pleased to make, let me live. But that's what I want. Please spare my people. That's my appeal to you. My people and I have been sold to be destroyed. We've been sold to be killed and wiped out. Suppose we'd only been sold as male and female slaves. Then I would have said any. I wouldn't have said anything. That kind of suffering would be a good enough reason to body, bother you. King Xerxes asked Queen Esther, Who is the man who has dared to do such a thing? And where is he? Esther said, That man hates us. He's our enemy. He's this evil Haman. Then Haman was terrified in front of the king and queen. The king got up. He was very angry. He left his wine and went out into the palace garden. But Haman realized that the king had already decided that what he was going to do to him. So he stayed behind to beg Queen Esther for his life. The queen, the king returned from his palace garden to the dinner hall. Just then he saw Haman falling on the couch where Esther was lying. The king shouted, Will he even treat the queen like this? Will he harm her while she's right there with me in the house? As soon as the king finished speaking, his men covered Haman's face. Then Harbona said, There's a pole standing near Haman's house. He's prepared it for Mordecai. Mordecai is the one who spoke up to help you. Haman has planned to put it, have him put to death. He was going to have the pole stuck through his body. Then he was going to sit out at a place where it would be 75 feet above the ground. Harbona was one of the officials who attended the king. The king said to his men, Put Haman to death. Stick the pole through his body. Sit it up where everyone can see. So they did. And they used the pole Haman had prepared for Mordecai. Then the king's anger calmed down. Chapter 8. That same day, the king's exes gave Queen Esther everything Haman had owned. 
Haman had been the enemy of the Jews. Esther had told the king that Mordecai was her cousin. So Mordecai came to see the king. The king took his ring off and had his royal mark on it. He had taken it back from him. Now he gave it to Mordecai. And Esther put Mordecai in charge of everything Haman had earned. Esther made another appeal to the king. She fell at his feet and wept. She begged him to put an end to the evil plan of Haman, the Agagite. He had decided to kill the Jews. The king reached out his gold scepter toward Esther. She got up and stood in front of him. She said, King Xerxes, I hope you will think what I'm asking is the right thing to do. I hope you will please with me. If you are, and if it pleases you, let an order be written. Let it take the place of the messages Haman wrote. Haman was the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite. He planned to kill the Jews. He wrote orders to destroy us in all your territories. I can stand by and see the horrible trouble down for all my people. I can stand to see my family destroyed. King Xerxes gave a reply to Queen Esther and Mordecai the Jew. He said, Haman attacked the Jews, so I've given Esther everything he owned. My men have stuck a pole through his dead body. They've set it up where everyone can see it. Now write another order in my name. Do it for the benefit of the Jews. Do what seems best to you. Stamp the order with my royal mark. Nothing that is written in my name and stamped with my mark can ever be changed. Right away, the king sent for the royal secretaries. It was the 23rd day of the third month. That was the month of Sivan. They wrote down all Mordecai's orders to the Jews. They also read them to the royal officials, the governors, and the nobles of the 127 20 territories in his kingdom. The territories reached from India all the way to Kash. The orders were written down in the writing of each territory. They were written in the language of each nation. They were also written to the Jews in their own writing and language. Mordecai wrote the orders in the name of King Xerxes. He stamped them with the king's royal mark. He sent them by messengers on horseback. They rode fast horses that were raised just for the king. The Jews in every city could now gather together and fight for their lives. The king's order gave them that right. But suppose soldiers from any nation or territory attacked them, their women or children. Then the Jews could destroy, kill, and wipe out their soldiers. They could also take the goods that belonged to their enemies. A day was appointed for the Jews to do that in all the king's territories. It was the thirteenth day of the twelfth month. That was the month of Adar. A copy of the order was sent out as, as law in every territory. It was announced to the people of every nation, so the Jews would be ready on that day. They could pay back their enemies. The messengers rode on the royal horses. They raced along. That's what the king commanded them to do. The order was also sent out in the fort of Susa. Mordecai left the king and went on his way. Mordecai was wearing royal clothes when he went. They were blue and white. He was also wearing a large gold crown, and he was wearing a purple coat. It was made out of fine linen. The city of Susa celebrated with great joy. The Jews were filled with joy and happiness. They were very glad because now they were being honored. They celebrated and enjoyed good food. They were glad and full of joy. That was true everywhere the king's order came. It was true in every territory and every city. Many people from other nations announced that they had become Jews. That's because they were so afraid of the Jews. Chapter 9 The king's order had to be carried out on the 13th day of the 12th month. That was the month of Adar. On that day, the enemies of the Jews had hoped to win the battle over them. But now everything had changed. The Jews had gained the advantage over those who, had, who hated them. The Jews gathered together in their cities. They gathered in all the territories that the King Xerxes ruled over. They came together to attack those who were trying to destroy them. No one could stand out against them. The people from all the other nations were afraid of them. All the nobles in the territories helped the Jews. So did the royal officials, the governors, and the king's officials. That's because they were so afraid of Mordecai. He is well known in the past. His fame spread all through the territories, so he became more and more important. The Jews struck down with swords all their enemies. They killed them and destroyed them. 
They did what they pleased to those who hated them. The Jews killed 500 men. They destroyed them in the fort of Susa. They secured Parshandatha, Dalvin, As Aspartha, Paratha, Adalia, Aridatha, Parmashta, Arisai, Aridai, and Vizatha. They were the ten sons of Haman. He was the son of Hamadatha. Haman had been the enemy of the Jews. They didn't take anything that belonged to their enemies. A report was brought to the king that same day. He was told how many men had been killed in the fort of Susa. He said to Queen Esther, The Jews have killed 500 men. They destroyed them in the fort of Susa. They said killed the ten sons of Haman there. What have they done in the rest of my territories? Now what do you want? I'll give it to you. Now do you... What do you want me to do for you? I will do that too. If it pleases you, Esther answered, let the Jews and Susa carry out today's order tomorrow also. Take poles through the dead bodies of Haman's ten sons. Set them up where everyone can see them. So, king, so the king commanded that it be done. An order was set out in Susa. And the king's men did to the bodies of Haman's sons everything they were told to do. The Jews and Caesar came together on the 14th day of the month of Adar. They put 300 men to death in Susa, but they didn't take anything that belonged to those men. During that time, the rest of the Jews also gathered together. They lived in the king's territories. They came together to fight for their lives. They didn't want their enemies to bother them anymore. They wanted to get some peace and rest. So they killed 75,000 of their enemies. But they didn't take anything that belonged to them. It happened on the 13th of Adar. On the 14th day, they rested. They made it a day to celebrate with great joy. And they enjoyed good food. But the Jews and Susa had gathered together on the 13th and 14th. Then on the 15th, they rested. They made it a day to celebrate with great joy. And they enjoyed good food. That's why Jews who live out in the villages celebrate on the 14th. On the 14th of Adar, they celebrate that day with great joy, and they enjoy good food. They also give presents to each other on that day. Mordecai wrote down these events. He sent messages to all the Jews through the territories of King Xerxes. It didn't matter whether the Jews lived nearby or far away. Mordecai told them to celebrate the 14th and 15th days of the month of Adar. He wanted them to do it every year. Mordecai told the Jews to celebrate the time when they got rest from their enemies. That was the month when their sadness was turned into joy. It was when their weeping turned into a day for celebrating. He read the letters to celebrate those days as times of joy. He wanted the people to enjoy good food. He told them to give presents of food to one another. He also wanted them to give gifts to people who were poor. So the Jews agreed to continue the survey they had started. They kept doing what Mordecai had written to. Haman was the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite. He was the he had been the enemy of all the Jews. He had planned to destroy them. He had cast a lot to destroy them completely. The law was called Per, but the king had found out about Haman's evil plan. So the king had sent out written orders. He had ordered that Haman's evil plan against the Jews should happen to him instead. The king also commanded that the poles be stuck through the dead bodies of Haman and his sons. Then they could be set up where everyone could see them. The days the Jews were celebrating was, were called Purim. Purim comes from the word Pur. Pur means law. Now the Jews celebrate these two days every year. They do it because of everything that was written in Mordecai's letter. They also do it because of what they had seen and what had happened to them. So they established it as a regular practice. They decided that they would always observe these two days of the year. They would celebrate in the required way. And they would celebrate at the appointed time. They and their children after them would always observe these days. And so would all who joined them. The day should be remembered and celebrated. They should be re they should be remembered by every family for all time to come. They should be celebrated in every territory and in every city. 
The Jews never stop celebrating the days of Purim. Their children after them should always remember these days. So Queen Esther, the daughter of Abihail, wrote a second letter. She wrote it together with Mordecai the Jew. They wanted to give their full authority to the second letter about Purim. Mordecai sent letters to all the Jews in the 127 territories of the kingdom of Xerxes. The letters had messages of kindness and hope in them. The letters established the days of Purim at their appointed time. They spoke about what Mordecai the Jew and Queen Esther had ordered the people to do. Everything should be done in keeping with the directions and the Jews had set up for themselves and their children after them. The directions applied to their times of fasting and sadness. Esther's order established the rules about Purim. It was written down in the records. Chapter 10. King Xerxes required people all through his kingdom to bring gifts. King Xerxes will require gifts from its father's shores. All the king's powerful and mighty acts are written down. And that includes the whole story of how important Mordecai was. The king had given him a position of great honor. All these kings are written, things are written down, are written in the official records of the kings of Media. The position of Mordecai the was second only to the position of King Xerxes. Mordecai was the most important Jew. All the other Jews had high respect for him. Because, that's because he worked for the good of his people. And he spoke up for the benefit of all the Jews. Proverbs, 20, Proverbs 27 Don't brag about tomorrow. You don't know what a day will bring. Let another person praise you and not your own mouth. Let an outsider praise you and not your own lips. James are heavy, and Sam weighs a lot, but letting, fall, letting a foolish person make you angry is a heavy load than both of them. Anger is me, and great anger overpowers me, but who can face just? Being worn openly is better than being loved in secret. Wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy kisses you many times. When you are full, you even hate honey. When you are hungry, even what is bitter tastes sweet. Anyone who runs away from home is like a bird that flies away from its nest. Perfume and innocence bring joy to your heart. And the sweetness of a friend comes from their honest advice. Then desert your friend or a friend of your family. And don't go to your realtor's house when trouble strikes. A neighbor nearby is better than a realtor far away. My son, be wise and bring joy to my heart. Don't I can answer anyone who makes fun of me. Most people see danger and go to a safe place. Childish people keep on going and suffer for it. Take the code of one who puts some money forward strange eyes. Hold it until you get paid back if it is done for an outside. Suppose you loudly bless your neighbor early in the morning. Then you might as be well be cursing, me, cursing, cursing him. A wa nagging wife is like the dripping of a leaky roof in the rainstorm. Stopping her is like trying to stop the wind. It's like trying to grab olive oil with your hand. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. A person who guards a fig tree will eat its fruit, and a person who protects their master will be on it. When you look into water, you see a likeness of your face. When you look into your heart, you see what you are really like. Death and the grave are never satisfied. People's eyes are never satisfied either. Fight is silver, and he tests God. The people are tested by the praise they receive. Suppose you could grind a foolish person in a mill. Suppose you could grind them as they would grind, as you would grind grain with a tool. Even then, you could not remove their foolishness from them. Be sure you know how your flocks are doing. Pay careful attention to your herds. Riches don't last forever, and the crown is not secure for all time to come. The hay is removed, and new growth appears. The grass from the hills is gathered in. The new lands will provide you with clothes, and the money from selling your goods will buy your field. You have plenty of goods milk to feed your family. It will also feed your female servants. Psalm 100 and 145 I will honor you, my God and King, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you. I will praise your name forever and ever. Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one cannot completely understand how great you are. Parents praise your works to their children. They tell all about your mighty acts. They speak about your glorious majesty. I will spend time thinking about your wonderful deeds. They speak about the powerful and wonderful things you do. I talk about the great things that...
you have done. They celebrate you all great goodness. They sing for joy about your holy acts. The Lord is gracious, kind, and tender. He is slow to get angry and full of love. The Lord is good to all. He shows deep concern for everything he has made. Lord, all your works praise you. Your faithful people praise you. They tell about your glorious kingdom. They speak about your power. Then all people will know about the mighty things you have done. You, they will know about the glorious majesty of your kingdom. Your kingdom is a kingdom that will last forever. Your rule will continue for all time to come. The Lord will keep all his promises. He is faithful in everything he does. The Lord takes good care of all those who fall. He lifts up all those who feel helpless. Every living thing looks to you for food. You give it to them exactly when they need it. You open your hand and satisfy the needs of every living creature. The Lord is right in everything he does. He is faithful in everything he does. The Lord is ready to help all those who call out to him. He helps those who really need it when they call out to him. He satisfies the needs of those who have respect for him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all those who love him, but he will destroy all sinful people. I will praise the Lord with my mouth. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. Now that's done, I should now do the Lord's Prayer. Please bow your heads. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, you will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as you have also forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. See you tomorrow. Bye.